No, no, they will tell. One minute. Yeah. Just a minute. Good morning, all panelists and attending members. I am Sumit Sora, host for these webinars. I request Dr. Som Sekhar to speak to start this session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Sumit ji. Uh, dear trainees, welcome. Uh, as you know, you know, now this is an era of multimodality treatment. Surgical onco alone has no value and you cannot give any cure re results. It's an era of MDT, tumor board, and cross speciality within the oncology collaboration which helps the patient. So medical, radiation, nuclear medicine, oncopathology, psycho-oncology, and all of them together. So it is very, very important during your surgical onco training you visit, have a posting in the Department of Nuclear Medicine, Nuclear Therapy, PET Scan, Theranostics, and also go to Oncopathology, there are, you know, cross speciality, you must learn and master it. So to understand this today, we have a consultant, Dr. Avinash Reddy, uh, who is uh, a very, uh, you know, knowledgeable, who is trained in AIMS, and who is working at Astor International Institute of Onco, uh, who is taking care of the Nuclear Medicine Department, Theranostics, and uh, PET scan and therapies. So now there is a very big field called Theranostic, where you have a therapeutic nuclear medicine molecules. No longer nuclear medicine department is diagnostic, just to say, okay, we do bone scan, or you do a dual gamma camera scan, or a PET scan, or a FAPI, or, uh, you know, uh, FDG. But now they have numerous molecules which are used for therapy. So like, you know, you have your natrium, then you have strontium therapies, you have FAPI therapies, and you have iodine therapies, and now the it, this is an era of tagged monoclonal antibody tag nuclear medicine, which can be used for therapy. That is called theranostics. So to discuss about it, what every surgical onco trainee student must know, we have Dr. Avinash, and over to you, Avinash. Thank you very much for accepting uh, national boards uh, and DNB boards invitation. Heartfelt thanks on behalf of myself and the students, and over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my topic is uh, it's, it's like theranostics in oncology and recent advances. And uh, first of all, everyone should know what is nuclear medicine. Uh, so nuclear medicine is a medical specialty that uses radioactive traces or radiopharmaceuticals to assess the bodily functions and to diagnose as well as treat the disease. So uh, in diagnostic nuclear medicine, uh, we use nanomolar concentration of radioactive substances, uh, which helps in physiological, like which uh, function, uh, which which helps in bodily functions and physiological functions of uh, body. In whereas in therapeutic nuclear medicine, we use radioactive materials tagged with some specific molecules and helps in treating the diseases. Uh, so, like before coming to everything, I think everyone should know what is uh, radioactive material and everything. So this is just a normal atom in which there is a nucleus which has protons and neutrons and the surrounding ones is electrons. So atom is a table if the forces among these particles uh, particles are handled well. So it will become unstable when these forces are unbalanced. Uh, instability of these atomic atoms nucleus may result from excess of neutrons or excess of protons. Uh, this, uh, if you see there is a like based on number of protons and number of neutrons, there's a band called proton-neutron ratio band in which these atoms which has this specific number of protons and neutrons are stable. So if there is excess of protons or excess of neutrons, it will become unstable. And when unstable uh, nucleates, they, are, they become radioactive. So the phenomenon of radioactivity is called spontaneous disintegration of unstable atomic nuclei into atomic nuclei to form more stable atomic nuclei. So this uh, excess, whatever excess is there in this uh, protons or neutrons, they shed those things and they'll become stable and they comes into this band. So this uh, radioactivity can be transcribed into several uh, uh, modes. So isomeric transition, beta decay, alpha decay, positron decay, electron capture, and spontaneous fission. So based on, uh, after after this uh, unstable nucleus goes through these decays, they will become stable. These are all important because we have specific molecules which undergo some specific type of decays and helps in some uh, diagnosis or some therapeutic. 
So I will just briefly tell about these things. So this isomeric transition or gamma decay is a type of decay in which disintegration of parent nuclei to daughter is through by emission of gamma rays. So gamma rays will be emitted and parent nuclei become daughter nuclei and it is become stable. Whereas in beta decay, it's a de type of decay in which an atom nucleus emits beta particle which is, uh, which is an electron and it, it becomes a stable radionuclide. And this is this transition is called isobaric transition because the mass number is same. If you see, iodine one thirty one becomes xenon one thirty one, and mass is same. So this is called isobaric transition. And alpha decay. This is one of the most uh, newer one and prominent one, which everyone should be knowing. In which this uh, decay of uh, parent nuclei into uh, daughter nuclei with emission of large. Uh, mass having uh, alpha particle. So alpha particle is nothing but a helium particle and this uh, common examples includes uh, actinium, radium and bismuth which is currently used. And positron decay and everyone must be knowing about <laughs> positron emission tomography or PET CT uh, in which this radionuclide, unstable parent nuclide goes to uh, stable nuclide by emission of positron. So positron has a special characteristics in which uh, uh, it decays into two gamma rays and those are usually in 180 degree direction. Uh, when when uh, this positron decay happens, these two gamma rays is emitted and we try to capture these two gamma rays using PET CT machine. So this is called coincidence detection, coincidence. And, uh, so these are a few properties of uh, alpha, beta, gamma rays which uh, has to be known in which gamma rays if you see they have very less ionizing power and they travel far and far whereas beta rays it has comparatively low ionizing power, alpha rays it has very high ionizing power. Ionizing power means if it uh, emits the nearby area how, uh, uh, how ionization happens. Like for example, if the alpha rays emitting is near uh, uh, any DNA, the ionization is very, very high so that there is double standard breaks and death of that cell. Whereas comparatively beta rays, even if it is emitted, they uh, create single standard breaks and cell kill can happen, may not happen. Uh, whereas penetrating power is one more thing which has to be uh, known because of its radiation safety precautions. Uh, this this uh, this diagram summarizes penetrating power in which alpha rays because they are very heavy even they can be stopped using paper whereas beta rays they can be stopped by thick uh, substances like some human like with uh, like human hand or papers thick bundle of papers or metals whereas gamma rays it cannot be literally stopped so they travel using like they travel through paper metals as well as water and concrete. So what we, our department will be having a thick wall of concrete which significantly reduce the radiation burden. So if at all patient is there inside the department, the radiation emission outside the department will be checked and that uh, amount of concrete which has to be used, which will be told initially itself. So this, the right side diagram summarizes the ionizing power. So if uh, uh, alpha emission, there is significant uh, uh, ionization, whereas the, like beta emitting has a relatively stable ionizing power and gamma rays doesn't literally have any ionizing power. So uh, we do have diagnostic radionuclide and thera therapeutic radionuclide. And properties of this ideal diagnostic radionuclide is uh, like it should be a gamma emitter because it is not going to do any ionization. And gamma energy is around 100 to 300 keV. It's based on our machine property because um, our machine can detect 100 to 300 keV property having gamma nuclide very clearly. And effective half life is if you're doing some test, we need at least one and a half times that test duration. For example, uh, we'll be doing bone scan. Bone scan will be like uh, uh, bone scan. We'll be injecting radio nuclear substance. And we do take scans till 24 hours sometimes, but ideally is around three to four hours. Uh, and because of that, like because we might be taking delayed measures up to 24 hours, the test, uh, the effective half life, it should be around at least 1.5 times of that. So uh, and 
One more property is availability, whether it is uh, expensive or inexpensive and easily availability. So, uh, our uh, gamma, new, gamma radio nuclear, which we use is most common, which we use is technician maintenance, which is very easily available using a generator based and expensive wise also, it is very relatively inexpensive. And preparation. This preparation also holds a uh, significant radiation burden to the patient because the tagged molecule has to be unused or tagged molecule has to be uh, excreted so that radiation burden to the patient is reduced. And uh, coming to uh, properties of ideal therapeutic radionuclide, it should be either beta emitter or alpha emitter. As I told you, ionization power of uh, alpha emitter is the highest and beta emitter is relatively low. And because we are using it as for therapeutic purposes, we need cell kill. So alpha has highest cell kill compared to beta and these are the both are ideal therapeutic radionuclides. And energy should be in the uh, MEV range. Whereas uh, gamma for gamma emitting substances is KEV range. This is MEV range because it has to deliver more energy in the relatively lower space. And uh, half-life has to be long. Uh, for diagnostic, uh, half-life should be low so that radiation burden to the patient has to be reduced. Whereas for the therapeutic molecule, it has to be high so that there should be more and more radiation uh, coming into the cell so that cell destruction can happen. And availability, as usual, it, it should be easily available. Currently, we get therapeutic molecules uh, from Baba Atomic Research Center, uh, Mumbai. Uh, and preparation-wise, these radioactive substances, when get from these uh, nuclear reactors or uh, other places, they have to prepare, they have to, uh, they have to uh, tag some other molecule and prepare, and this has to be simple preparation. Because the more time which we be with the radioactive substance, the more radiation effect which will be on the technician which, who is working on the radioactive substance or the doctor who is injecting away. So, and also why target to non-target uh, uptake should be there for this uh, therapeutic radionuclide? Because uh, unused medicine has to be excreted through urine. If it is there in the body, it will create some other physiological effect. Uh, uh, till now we were talking about radioactive compound itself. So when it is linked to some other substance like targeting molecule, it can help in diagnosing or it can help in therapeutic. So uh, if you see this is the image in which radioactive compound is there in the left side and the linker molecule is a physiological molecule which, uh, which, which targets this target molecule. And uh, right side, if you see, this is a cancer cell in which there is some target molecule on the cancer cell. For example, in prostate cancer cells, the target protein is PSMA, that is for prostate-specific membrane antigen. It's a membrane antigen which is present on the uh, cancer cell. And uh, we target that PSMA molecule using PSMA antidote, which is linked with radioactive compound. Uh, com coming to most common diagnostic radiopharmaceuticals and the therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals which we use in the department. So, uh, left side you see 99 m technician. That's a radionuclide which is tagged with MDP and used in bone scans. Technician 99 m uh, DMSA, DTPA. These are the things which commonly used in the department for diagnostic radiopharmaceuticals in gamma imaging. Whereas 18FMTG, gallium PSMA, gallium protonox, these are the uh, effect radionuclides, radiopharmaceuticals. And uh, coming to therapeutic molecules, till till 2014-15, uh, the, the only thing which we were which we are using was iodine 131, sodium iodide for thyroid cancers and uh, MIBG for neuroblastomas. Uh, currently, there are several other molecules like lutetium PSMA, actinium PSMA, lutetium rotate, actinium rotate, lutetium FAPI, actinium FAPI. So the, in this, if you see, this is a PSMA, which is being tagged with lutetium 177 or actinium 177. So radionuclide can be different, whereas the specific molecule is same, PSMA, PSM. <coughs> uh, coming to what is theranostics. So the theranostics is a uh, like it is, it refers to the pairing of diagnostic biomarkers with therapeutic agents that share a specific target in disease cells or tissues. 
as i told you that psma in cancer cell is present in the uh, it's a membrane and it's present on every cancer cell so you are targeting the psma which can be linked with either diagnostic molecule or it can be linked with therapeutic molecule so if you use low dose the diagnostic molecule it can help in diagnosing where all uh, prostate cancer cells is spread throughout the body whereas if you give that higher dose and use therapeutic molecule it can help in therapy also so this uh, diagram summarizes uh, the theranostic approach in nuclear medicine so ideally speaking the isotope a tag with specific molecule has to be used in lower doses for scanning and higher doses for therapy so if you see right side upper one that red box it has iodine 131 lutetium 177 nitrium nitrium and samarium so these are this can be used for both diagnosis as well as therapy so if you use these things in lower doses it can be used in the diagnosis if you use the same molecules in higher doses it can be used in therapy also because they have both gamma emitting properties as well as beta emitting properties and other molecules like this technetium iodine 123 gallium 67 18 r pan gallium 68 this emits only specific molecules like uh, they emit only gamma or positron so can be used only for diagnosis they can't emit beta beta or they can't emit alpha so they can't be used for therapy whereas the other ones which you see here actinium and rhenium they emit only alpha particles so they can be used only for therapeutic purpose only so most common theranostic pills which were used in nuclear medicine currently are uh, 123 sodium iodide or 131 sodium iodide which can be used for thyroid cancer and hyperthyroidism uh, mibg as i told you it can be tagged with 123 or 131 it can be used in a neuroblastoma osteochromocytomas and paragangliomas and uh, this technetium nitrate and metronate or sodium fluoride pet which is used in diagnostic and it can be tagged with the radium 223 for therapeutic purposes it is called bone pain palliation in prostate cancer and the gallium dota based agents and lutetium dota tail so if you see this dota is same here this octreotide the both are same dota based octreotide here lutetium based octreotide both are sstr targeting and neuroendocrine tumors gallium psma fpsma and uh, targeted with uh, tagged with lutetium 177 actinium 177 uh, the target is psma and used in prostate cancer cells and uh, one more diagnostic there is technetium ma in uh, tear like in uh, hepatocellular carcinomas or uh, metastatic colorectal carcinomas diagnostic may be used this uh, technetium labeled ma whereas therapeutic it is uh, yttrium anti microspheres so if you if you use the uh, same uh, sorry so if you use the same molecule for diagnosis as well as therapy like this iodine 131 and lutetium 177 that's called pure theranostic approach whereas if you use uh, uh, sodium iodide 123 and 131 or gallium based uh, octreotide and lutetium based octreotide or gallium based psma lutetium based psma in this PSMA is same, where but the other molecule which emitting radiation is different. So lutetium one hundred and twenty for therapy, and gallium gallium sixty eight for uh, diagnostic approach. This radium nucleide is different. This is called hybrid approach in which PSMA is the molecule which has physiological effect in the body. So PSMA decides what has to happen inside the body. It is not lutetium one hundred and twenty seven. It only helps in targeting the molecule and cell kill. So this is called hybrid approach. uh so coming to like so uh, in this uh, it's been already like i have been informed that uh, thyroid cancer has been already discussed so i'll be uh, more focusing on uh, bone pain palliation uh, dota therapies and psma therapies and tear uh, so in case of bone pain palliation diagnostics as i already told the diagnostic uh, molecule which has been used or technetium labeled uh, mdps hdps or sodium iodide whereas therapeutic it is uh, uh, radium 223 or samarium or lutetium hdds uh, so this is a modified uh, who pain ladder in which uh, the there is even there is a minimum pain there is uh, use of non obed analgesics 
and if there is uh, excessive pain or not treat not uh, uh, not treated by like non opioid and six so weak opioids can be given and in case of step 3 when there is intractable pain strong opioids can be given and uh, when in case of step 4 intervention other intervention treatments can be given in which our bone pain palliative can come in step 3 and step 4 where intractable pain is there and ours also as adjuvant so currently bone pain palliation is approved for metastatic painful bone lesions with osteoblastic response as confirmed by areas of intense uptake on radionuclide bone scan so we see this is mdp bone scan and the right side one is sodium iodide sodium fluoride pet bone scan so uh, this this intense uptake in the vertebrae ribs and the bilateral humerus and everything is is uh, it's showing very high uptake so uh, this high uptake is uh, based on this osteoblastic response in which newer bone formation will be happening and this mdp targets uh, that newer bone matrix as well as sodium fluoride pet targets that newer bone matrix so the uptake is shown properly <laughs> so currently this bone pain palliation approved in this osteoblastic metastasis only and uh, other contraindications is like uh, because uh, it is involving significantly marrow when compromised hematological functions uh, with uh, hemoglobin less than 8 or uh, 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 complete uh, wbc counts of less than 3500 or uh, platelet counts less than 1.5 lakhs this is contraindication bone pain palliation or uh, when patient is having significant reduced renal function uh, this uh, this because because the unused medicine is uh, excreted through kidneys so if the if there is a significant renal function there will be uh, the, the medicine what we give is inside the body and it keep on inducing more and more radiation and it can cause significant other side effects and when life expectancy is less than 3 months it is also contraindication because it is not going to help much uh, these are the common radioisotopes which are currently used in uh, bone pain palliation <laughs> uh, if we uh, use samarium 153 and uh, rhenium 188 and lutetium these are the most common ones are used uh, whereas uh, 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 currently uh, radium one the radium 223 dichloride is not available in india but uh, worldwide it is available and is being used and several studies has proved the efficacy of radium 223 as well as samarium uh, 150 in reducing concentration in hdb edt uh, nccn guidelines for management of ncrpc showed the radium chloride used in uh, here uh, like if you see in the end the chemotherapy in symptomatic patients who have bone metastasis docetaxel as well as radium chloride is uh, uh, advised according to ncc guidelines or if there is any docetaxel failure then radium chloride can be given for uh, bone metastasis so uh, these are the studies published studies on radium 223 dichloride in patients with uh, castration resistant prostate cancer and the symptomatic bone metastasis with or without uh, previous docetaxel use uh, this is one of the landmark uh, study uh, which uh, Uh, this is one of the landmark study which uh, showed uh, patients in which exhausted uh, uh, exhausted chemotherapy uh, uh, has been uh, like this radium 223 dichloride has been used and uh, um, uh, and in these patients there are significant symptomatic bone metastasis with known visceral metastasis and the uh, standard of care when compared with standard of care there is a significant interval in uh, significant reduction in pain symptoms observed so this is the, as i told you this is a landmark study which has alsin it's also called alsin cut uh, alpha synaptin in prostate cancer trial so in this 921 patients has been enrolled and 2 is to 1 ratio in 614 patients it has been uh, given uh, uh, alpha synaptin Whereas 307 patients have been have taken for only placebo, a uh, significant reduction in SSRI skeletal related events has been observed, as well as uh, significant improvement in in pain pain has been observed in these cases. And uh, uh, median overall survival in radium uh, actually there is one more sub analysis in this in which patients who have already received docetaxel or patient who has not received docetaxel. 
they have observed the median overall survival in which uh, significant median overall survival has been observed in radian 223 who has uh, not received any dosage vaccine which is 16.1 compared to placebo which is 11.5 months. Uh, in case of previous dose taxi use also, uh, although it is statistically significant of a three months uh, median overall survival increase. Other, other uh, secondary endpoints is uh, time to first symptomatic skeletal event has significantly prolonged in uh, Al syndrome. Uh, as I told you, other radial which is commonly used in India are Samaria Malmutica and Lutetium and these are uh, several studies which have been published. Or the very much central syndrome for palliation of bone pain associated with metastasis. So, so this is a paranoid which I was telling. So left side if you see the technician line and labeled HMDP, which shows where all that uh, uh, cancer cell has been there and bone bones can show this. Uh, and same same target we use uh, with rotation uh, one one is samarium or rotation one seventy one eighty ten. So this HMDP or EDTP or uh, bone matrix seeking agents. So other one as I told Lutetium 171 ADTMP for treatment of bone pain metastasis in disseminated skeletal metastasis. This study has been published uh, which showed significant reduction in pain in this case. Uh, one more this is AIM study in which Lutetium Dota Zol has been used for bone pain palliation and uh, this also showed significant increase in uh, uh, overall survival as well as quality of life in these patients. Now, coming to uh, PSMI theranostics. So, uh, uh, PSMI where, uh, where in the uh, treatment of uh, prostate cancer it comes. So, uh, even, even the uh, prostate is clinically localized, this is only radiation or radi radical prostate to me along with active surveillance can be there. And in case of non-metastatic, metastatic HSPC, non-metastatic CRPC, uh, our uh, PSMA pronostic may not come. But when it is metastatic and CRPC, these are the approved modalities by FDA. Along with, uh, if you see, there is only radium protein. This, this chart was before 2022. Uh, until that time, only radium protein 3 was approved for metastatic CRPC. Whereas currently, it has been approved, lutetium 177 PSMA has been approved. As I told you, PSMA is a cell, cell, cell surface uh, glycoprotein which has uh, 70 amino acids, which has a short intracellular portion and transmembrane portion and large extracellular portion which can be uh, which can be uh, which can be targeted. So normal PSMA expression can happen in PSMA uh, PSM epithelium, whereas in uh, uh, whereas this PSM PSMA and PSM ratio has significantly increases in PSMA cancer cells. So in this case, what happens is uh, uh, what, uh, what happens is there is like uh, multiplication of this uh, PSMA uh, protein over the cancer cells around a thousand times more, and we see more of prostate tumors, more of prostate uh, PSMA PSM ratios. So this uh, targeting of PSMA. Can, we can target all three areas, so intracellular portion, uh, transmembrane portion as well as extracellular portion. Intracellular portion targeting will be difficult because only after cell kill we can see the intracellular portion. The most common thing which we target is extracellular portion and it can be targeted by either monoclonal antibodies, aptamers or small molecule antigens. And the most common one which we use are small molecule antigens. So if you see on the right side, gallium PSM11, PSM IND, 18F, DCF, DC, DCF pill, or 18F PSM, all these are targeting one subscript which is extracellular. Because it is easy to target extracellular, so even without cell kill, we can target directly this. So if you, if you are listening any any of the current PSM things, those are all targeting only extracellular portions. This is the this is the, like this diagram summarizes what happens in either gallium PSMA or lutetium PSMA. So in case of lutetium PSMA, there is a prostate cancer cells in which this blue thing is the PSMA molecule as the transmembrane protein. 
and this transmembrane protein is targeted by this PSMS 617, which has been attached to the radioactive substance called rutesium 177. So once there is there the both the both attaches, there is endocytosis of the molecule, complete molecule, in which in which radio 177 lutetium keeps on emitting beta rays, and there will be cell kill. The same is the same is same goes with actinium PSMA also, in which actinium is the only thing targeted over here to PSMA. And when it internalizes and it emits alpha rays, there is more DNA damage. In case of the beta emitting radio pharmaceuticals, it is uh, you can consider one is two hundred. So one cell kill in beta, two hundred cell kill in alpha. Uh, so this, this is a land, this is one more land trial for lutetium PSMA. 617, which has been published in 2018. It's called Loop PSMA trial, in which they showed the significant overall survival. Um, and the main, the main uh, endpoint was PSA response. So uh, PSMA of 100 has gone uh, less to less than 50. So 50% decline in PSA uh, was uh, considered as PSA response. Along with that, the other endpoints were uh, toxicity testing. In which uh, primary endpoint around 17, 57% uh, cases, they achieved PSA decline of more than 50% or more. This is, as I told you, this is beta therapy. So if you see beta therapy, there is around 57% success rate of uh, PSMA decline of more than 50. And objective response is more in case of nodal or visceral disease, which is reported in around 82% of cases. So in case of visceral disease, uh, this Alcinka trial excludes the patients with visceral disease, whereas lutetium PSMA can be given in patients with visceral disease. So uh, uh, this is uh, AIMS New Delhi study in which they have used uh, lutetium PKFZ PSMA 6. So in this, if you see lutetium 177 is the radiometer which emits beta rays, DKFZ is the linker molecule, PSMA is the target protein which goes and attaches to PSMA mol uh, PSMA uh, transmembrane protein on cancer cell. So the therapy in metastatic cancer prevention of prostate cancer and safety, efficacy and quality of life assessment using uh, these things in which uh, there are 31 patients have been treated with uh, like the, when the initial study was published in 2019, 31 patients have been uh, uh, 31 patients have been treated in which uh, we have got complete responses also. So these two cases, if you see two out of 31 cases has complete responses. So these two had, uh, 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 these two had the less certain of burden with only visceral metastasis and uh, oligo bone metastatic. And, and other molly, other uh, cases like 20 out of 31 had partial responses which is around 65% of cases. Just above the average of 50 is that 50 percent which has been published in the previous study. In this, uh, in, in, in which are the cases have progressive disease, 6 out of 31 cases have excessive tumor burden with involvement of almost all the bones. And uh, so metabolic response, uh, metabolic response has been uh, observed in by Gallen 6 on scans in which two out of these uh, cases, like only out of six cases could be assessed with this so metabolic response. So out of these six cases, these two had complete response which has been the same cases of these two which had biochemical response and uh, uh, other ones had partial response 3 out of 6 cases and 1 out of 6 has stable disease. So clinical response along with other clinical responses, VASPOR has significantly reduced, analysis has, uh, score has reduced because there is cell kill, along with cell kill the, there will be reduction in pain, amount of pain and the quality of life has significantly improved. Uh, this is uh, our own Astra CMIK Astra Institute of Oncology case uh, in which there was significant, if you see there was a, a significant prostate involvement as well as lymph nodes and multiple bones. So uh, in this patient had presented in October 2022 and uh, this is the gallium scan. So this gallium scan uh, had shown that is a progression of disease compared to previous gallium scans and the PSA level was 81 with almost involvement of multiple bones. And initially, first after giving first cycle of uh, lutetium PSMA, uh, the, there is uh, like drop of for, the drop of PSA to 42 nanograms. So almost with the first cycle itself, we could uh, achieve that 50% PSA response. 
and uh, after the second PSM May, uh, the, the, there is a significant drop of PSA to uh, the 3, 3 nanogram. And uh, two months after the second PSM, we did gallium PSM scan to assess the disease extent. Uh, so you could see there is there is almost complete resolution of all the lesions which has been shown on the first scan. Uh, whereas only negligible amount is there, a negligible amount of pressure uptake is in the prostate region. So since this patient is a 94 year old individual, we had stopped uh, based on uh, a good response to two cycles of PSM therapy. We had stopped lutetium PSM therapy and currently he is under observation. And uh, there are several other clinical trials uh, which has been uh, uh, en enlisted. So uh, this out of this therapy trial and uh, LU PSM trial and visual trial has already uh, already been published, which showed the significant overall uh, overall survival as well as progression free survival compared to NOFU. So in, uh, so uh, as I told you, this PSM pathognomonistics contain lutetium PSM or actinium PSM based on which uh, beta emitting or alpha emitting substance has been uh, used. So actinium PSM then can be used in patients who are like this. Uh, this this can be used in patients who has already received lutetium PSM therapy and res proved unresponsive to the lutetium PSM therapy. So, uh, as I told you, in gamma, around 45-50% of uh, in beta and uh, lutetium PSMA, only 45-50% of patients are biochemically responded to PSMA ligands. Uh, whereas in actinium, it is around 20% more. So, this is one of the case, first case published uh, who has received actinium PSMA, in which, uh, if you see the left side, PSA level of 2923 and diffuse involvement of almost all the bones. Uh, in which PSMA, like lutetium PSMA is contraindicated because there is significant involvement of bone and uh, hematological dysfunction. But in this patient, when he has received the PS, uh, actinium PSMA after four cycles, it has, uh, it, he has got complete response. Uh, this is one more uh, case in which lutetium, uh, like a post lutetium PSMA. Uh, he is resistant to PA, lutetium PSMA and he had received actinium PSMA with a, a very good response and he is on follow up until 2000, like uh, this uh, study has been published in 2016 and the patient was uh, uh, alive till 2019. So other uh, published studies, there, there are uh, very less published studies of actinium PSMA. But the uh, one of the uh, good study which has been published is a Kachovan study, which uh, uh, which was um, a Germany German study in which dosimetric estimate and empirical dose finding in which around 100 kilo becquerel per kg body weight has been found to be adequate dose, and uh, uh, this is a systematic review and meta analysis which found uh, uh, second which which found around six. Six studies has six out of total 23 studies. Only six studies had uh, been used for this systematic review, and they found out it to be uh, uh, increasing in overall survival as well as progressive free survival compared to a uh, second line of chemotherapy capacity. So, as I told you, this has not been uh, pre approved, only lutetium PSM has been approved that to last year after several studies of 10 years. So this uh, this uh, actinium PSMA is not yet approved. I think it will be approved in the next one or two years. And uh, currently in use in India as a, a salvage therapy and unproven intervention clinical practice. It has been uh, used in several institutes throughout India, uh, like in New Delhi and Port Elizabeth. Currently, we are also trying to acquire this actinium here. Uh, there is one more niche topic in which uh, radio guided surgery, in which uh, it is a, like like gallium, like the, uh, uh, the patients who has been uh, uh, planned for uh, surgery like prostatectomy or uh, extend pelvic lymph node dissection. In which cases when we do uh, scan, we showed only one or two lesions uh, in the pelvis like lymph nodes. These can be. This can be uh, tagged with the technician PSMA 
and uh, probe can be used during the surgery to reduce the morbidity. So this is one of the example in which uh, uh, case PSA had, PSA was around eight. This is uh, 84 and 84 year old man in which the PSA was eight. And the MRI showed the um, prostate extra prostatic extension and sub centimeter lymph nodes in the left uh, internal iliac region. So when PSA and PET CT had been done, these two uh, lymph nodes in the left pelvic region had shown very good uptake. And those are uh, positive lymph nodes. So what uh, what they did is. Uh, during the surgery, like one day per, on the day of the surgery, it, the technician labeled PSMA had been injected and using the probe they have removed, like this is a probe cons, if you see this thing or not, or, so tumor to background the ratio they will be taking or the probe cons has been taken and using the probe only those selective lymph nodes have been dissected which found out to have cancer cells. So this reduces the morbidity over. <laughs> And thorough studies had been published uh, for radio guided surgery in prostate cancer. And um, this, this uh, showed good concordance of in vivo PSMA detectability with histological analysis of this specimen. Coming to DOTA diagnostics, uh, uh, so PSMA, as I told you, is a membrane antigen. The same goes to DOTA also. So this is somatostatin receptor. So for prostate cancer cells, that PSMA will be there. However, whereas for DOTA, uh, like for uh, a neuroendocrine tumors, this somatostatin receptor is there in the cancer cell. So we target those somatostatin receptors. There are several types of receptors. So we usually target two, three, or five. So the somatostatin analogs which are used, uh, either gallium or lutetium or uh, somatostatin, DOTA T, DOTA top, DOTA NOC. So this this summarizes the therapy which we do. So uh, this left side you see cancer cells, those are having some distant receptors, and the some distant analog which has been tagged with lutetium on seventy seven. When when it touches that some distant receptor, they are internalized, and those internalized tissues emits bitter ice and it helps in cell care. So this is one of the landmark study which. Uh, uh, phase 3 trial of lutetium protein for mid cut neuron recurrent tumor, which showed uh, uh, significant overall survival as well as progression free survival in these cases. And uh, uh, this is one more study which uh, which had. So, what happens is uh, in case of uh, like neuron recurrent tumor can be differentiated in WHO grade 1, 2, 3 based on case externalities. So, uh, in case of well differentiated neuron recurrent endocrine tumors like grade 1, uh, only DOTA take uptake will be there, FTG uptake may not be there. So whereas when you move towards fully differentiation, FTG uptake will be there and the total knock uptake will be minimal. So even in those cases which has uh, significant FTG uptake and uh, poorer uh, DOTA uptake, in which cases of high K6 or index, this lutetium DOTA take can be used with significant progression free survival and more median survival. And, uh, uh, and uh, lutetium protected and as well as actinum protected have the alpha and beta hunting substances theranostic. So actinum protected has not been approved by FDA and are currently used in patients who have poor response to lutetium protected therapy and compassionate risks. Uh, this is the study which has been published by AIMS New Delhi in which uh, lutetium protected to PRRT when failed actinum protected has been taken and uh, uh, around uh, 24 patients have been assessed in which partial uh, partial remission has been observed in 15, which is significant portion, 70% of cases. Uh, coming to last topic, which is a tear. So tear is transarterial uh, radiation embolization. So um, in which it's a minimally invasive radio guided uh, surgery, the radio guided procedure, which radio reflex can be administered through, through a microcatheter which is placed in uh, hepatic arterial vasculature. This is to irradiate like liver, liver tumors. So we don't occlude the tumors, we just go there and we inject the radioactive substances. And when they, uh, because they go to the uh, arterioles and block the uh, small arterioles and keep on emitting radiation, it helps in circuit. So following the hepatic uh, administration of hepatic artery, this radionuclides will be carried pressure towards the distal arterioles and this uh, emit high energy radiation to serve into cell death. 
So indications are common, current common indications are HCC, scolorectal hepatic metastasis, neuroendocrine hepatic metastasis. So in these cases, what we are preferentially going to downsize the tumors or bridge to transplant. So as a standalone therapy also can be done in case of surgically undesectable tumors or liver dominant metastasis. So uh, if you see, uh, uh, if this is um, uh, this year's staging stage C. This is where tear uh, tear is used in case uh, of multiple metastases in liver, which are uh, not amenable to surgery. We we uh, give this radioactive substance so that this can be used for further surgeries or bridge to transplant. So tear versus space. In hepatic hepatocellular carcinoma showed significant comparatively compared to uh, taste, there is a significant uh, quality of life improvement. Whereas overall survival is not statistically significant, but uh, number wise it is more. This is one more study which showed uh, like overall and individual patient level meta analysis, which showed tear is um, tear has more quality of life compared to taste. So in which 17 studies had uh, included, there was no significant difference in overall survival between these two modalities, whereas quality of life is more comparative or tail. Currently, many uh, agents are like, uh, being used, uh, the most common agent being uh, interim 90 tail, others include rhenium or iodine 123 liquid oil, 131 liquid oil. So uh, these agents, this is one more, one more AIM study which has been published, which uh, which compared the rhenium labradol versus yttrium anti spheres. So there is no significant difference in treatment related responses in these two patients, uh, these two categories. So the procedure is two stage procedure in which first stage we will be doing uh, all the lab investigations and technician labeled Marchant. So Marchant tells us like treat uh, how what is the treatment area and uh, whether any, there is any significant shunt between liver and lung. So if there is a shunt between liver and lung, based on how much percentage of shunt, we will be reducing the dose of therapy. So uh, this uh, technician labeled MA has, can be used for radiation dosimetry by using other, other, by using these methods. So we calculate the appropriate dose of uh, radionuclear which has to be delivered during the second stage procedure which you can be either atrium 90 tear or uh, 188 rhenium tear. So the same way the, the first uh, first stage procedure will be going to the uh, hepatic artery and uh, super selective, super selectively will be giving this uh, radioactive substance which which goes and embolizes the pre arterioles nearby the tumor cells and emits radiation and the cell kills the cancer cells. So post uh, like post the uh, post the procedure, we will be doing uh, atrium 90 PET CT, and we compare it usually with the pre-treatment PET CT so that the tumor volume, how much the uh, tumor volume it has been taken up, is there any deficit in the tumor volume or excess tumor or excess volume of uh, normal uh, hepatic tissue has been absorbed by this radionuclide. Because when there is excess molecule, uh, excess absorption, so we expect more of uh, side effects. So the most common side effects are fatigue, abdominal pain, nausea, fever, and uh, uh, increase in transient increase in transaminases. And all other severe side effects are chronic abdominal pain or radiation induced liver diseases, in which uh, hepatitis can be there, and decompensation can be there, and radiation necrosis of segment and rupture also can be there which leads to liver pain. So uh, coming to conclusions, so uh, the radioactive traces helps in diagnosis as well as treat diseases. So the most common ones which we use for diagnosis are gamma emitting and positron emitting substances. Whereas for treatment, it is beta emitting and alpha emitting substances. So therapeutic refers to the pairing of these diagnostic biomarkers with therapeutic agents that share a specific target in disease cells that we use. And uh, as I discussed, bone pain palliation and how, like where in WHO pain ladder it comes and the, what are the traces which are used and more specific diagnostic approaches like the PSMA, Dota now, Dota 8 or TR or upcoming role in radio guided surgery. This concludes my uh, session. If you have any queries, please. Thank you.
So, uh, fatty, fatty is the like fatty is one more molecule which has been recently uh, approved, uh, like not approved, recently discovered uh, for uh, diagnosis as well as therapy. So, uh, so fatty is fibroblast associated protein inhibitor. So, tumor cells has uh, tumor, a uh, tumor has a tumor cell as well as protein matrix in surrounding tissues. Uh, so, in those matrix, fibroblast uh, will be there. So those tumor fibroblasts are targeted to using this uh, uh, fat molecules. So these these can be used for both diagnosis as well as therapy, as uh, mentioned, the gallium fatty for uh, diagnosis and lutetium and actinium fatty for therapy. Uh, several studies are being done currently, which is uh, to get published, but they showed very good responses because uh, in those tumors which which are uh, not unable to lutetium PSM, you can do fatty studies and if there is fatty uptake, you can do fatty therapy also. So one more thing is, any malignancy, so uh, uh, this bone cannibalization can be done for any, uh, any any uh, any malignancy with sclerotic bone metastasis. Sir, every everyone for diet kidney, sir. Not not with the private. Uh, uh, what? Everyone, one second. Ah, uh, sir, chat uh, chat with every person for kidney, sir. Okay. Done, done, done. Thanks.
क्विकली रिप्लाई करने की कोशिश कीजिए सर यस सर आप जस्ट ट्राई टू रिप्लाई द क्वेरी इन ओनली सर डोंट टाइप ओके ओके सॉरी सॉरी या सर ओनली या आई थिंक आई थिंक ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द टाइम ऑल ऑफ द टाइम ओके सर या Yes, I'll be sharing the PPT with the MB board. You can uh, get this. I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.